Yo, what up, everybody? It's your boy, Rello. That's R-E-L-L-O. And welcome back to another episode of Rail Talk, the show where I'm going to be talking about whatever the fuck I want. And if you don't like it, fuck you. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody that's been tapping in with the new show. I appreciate everybody that's been subscribing to the Vibe Wichita page. Everybody has been sending me uh, positive feedback, um, wanting more, wanting more topics. I really appreciate it. Um, this is new to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm so used to working with other people as far as creating content that me sitting by myself is kind of it's kind of relaxing, but it's also kind of nerve wracking because I want to create dope content, but then I want to be as organic and real as possible. So I don't want to stunt or fake any shit. So however I feel about something, that's just how I feel. That's the way I talk. It's funny because uh, when I linked up with the uh, ladies of Vibe with her and shout out to Vibe with her, um, one of the ladies said, and I think it was Liz that actually said it, that she's like, Rello, like, why are you always yelling? Why are you so passionate? You And it's, it's just because this is the way that I talk. Like, you know, I'm a passionate guy. I grew up outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a young kid, you know what I'm saying? We had to yell. <laughs> we were outside. So I guess that like the volume of my voice has never really been something that I've paid so much attention to. Um, I know that for some people it can make it can seem as though I'm angry, which half of the time I'm not. To be honest with you, I don't think anybody's ever really seen me angry in a situation um as far as this music shit. But ain't nothing like Ain't nothing really to get worth getting mad over to keep it a buck with you. But um, there's been a lot going on. There's been a lot going on. Um, I'm going to read off some of the stuff that we got going on today. Um, we're going to talk about college, college as a whole, what's been going on during the pandemic with college. We're going to talk about football being canceled, um, young peewee football being canceled, all these young kids, you know. They have a lot of free time now. What are they gonna do with it? And um, at the end, I'm kind of gonna I'm kind of gonna discuss a little bit as far as people kind of taking my words for bullshit. So we're gonna get a little bit into that. But let's go ahead and jump on the first topic. So college, 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 college. Okay, so to start off, one thing that I've learned during this pandemic, I've learned that there are upper class. There are people that are rich, that are very successful, and they have a lot of money and stuff. But what I've learned is that the country that I live in is nothing like that. Um, I've learned that due to the pandemic and us needing to shut down, I've learned that our government can't be shut down longer, honestly, than three days. And that's the God given truth because, um, the government shut down for a couple of days and it's almost like everyone's running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Everybody's trying to figure out where's this money going to come from? Where's this? Like we're losing money in this. We don't have this. And I think that, Oftentimes we can take for granted what we really need when when it comes to just thinking so much about money, thinking so much like America had is nonetheless the um, land of opportunities, but also it is a land that is solely focused and ran on dollars, on pennies, on change, on moolah, and that applies to everything. That applies to everything. So in the middle of this pandemic, um, it's been reported that the United States has slacked completely, completely on shutting things down and us being able to start anew in, the, in within a couple of months. So now what we're going through is basically a second wave of COVID and um, the numbers have spiked up and it's just looking crazier and crazier. But what I've noticed is, is that events are being canceled. College football is being canceled. 
jobs are working from home for the rest of the year. But it's okay for us to send our children to school. It's okay for it's okay for us to have classrooms that are filled between 20 to 30 kids. It's all right for us to take the chance and and create these 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 big populated areas where more than likely more people can be infected and sick. Um I'm seeing now that there are colleges that are um returning students, returning students to dorms and they're offering having classes outside, they're offering having classes uh spread out on different days and all this other shit or whatever. But all that is telling me is that this school needs money. So we're talking about colleges that have been open for hundred years, if not more. We're talking about the big, the big name universities and they're not doing shit. They're not doing shit. They're basically telling us that, yo, you need to still go to school, but right now in the middle of this pa- middle of this pandemic, I don't really think that's the time. I don't really think that we need to be in such a rush to get back into big groups and big units. Like I know that we want social time and we want social hour. We have to come up with different ways to create um socializing. We have to come up with different ways. Um me myself As a parent, me and my wife have had a discussion and our son is not going to uh, back to school, um, physical school, but we will do online. And um, I've taken the responsibility of being the teacher. Um, My my wife has a um, job that is very essential and I appreciate the hard work and the dedication that her and her team out there, what they do for us every single day. My wife is a nurse. If, I, if I'm if i going to go that far, I might as well just fucking say it. But um, she's very essential. And in this time, um, someone has to be home. Somebody has to be home for our kids. And I've taken on the initiative of being that teacher, that uh. PE teacher, you know what I'm saying? The science and all this other shit. And like, don't get me wrong. My son's going to be active, you know, doing classes and stuff on video and stuff like that or whatever. But I want to continue to elevate his brain, elevate his mind. So, you know, I'm going to start vlogging about it. And uh, it's going to be a process. It's going to be something that I have to get used to because my son's going into the third grade. You know what I'm saying? That's when we start getting into, you know, that multiplication. You know what I'm saying? That division. You know what I'm saying? No, don't get me wrong. Math is like my best subject. Math and writing a paper. Boy, when it comes to me writing a paper, chef's kiss. I mean, it's just beautiful. I'm one of those kids that I could write a paper that day and it's due that day. And I'm still going to at least get a B on it. Yeah, I'll see that nigga. <laughs> but I have to get used to all of this all over again. And I know it's going to be a process, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Me and my son, we got each other. And if there's any questions, like I best believe I'll make it happen. But what I was saying all that to get to is that I I have to be responsible and come up with different ways for my son to be social. Um, I can't be that control freak and keep him secluded to the house forever. Um. I can't, I have to keep his social skills at a high level because one thing that um if you ever see me out and about you'll like you'll you'll probably hear my kids before you even hear me talk because they are so social like I don't know where they get that from <laughs> but my son will literally have a full-fledged conversation with someone and you will think like he's the smartest kid in the world. My daughter is only two years old, but she so knows so many words that it's just mind-blowing. But I feel like all that comes from them being social at such a young age. I had my daughter in daycare when she wasn't even six, when she was about six months, six to eight months. Um, 
I we had we had our son in daycare um, from a year, a year and a half, however old it was. I want to say a year and a half, possibly two. But being social with other children and other adults to me is very um, necessary for a child's development. And I don't know yet how I'm going to do this. I hope that um, they kind of give us a roster of the kids of the classroom that he would be in if he was there. And um, we kind of just create, you know, social events, you know, per kid, maybe five or six kids at a time. Um, parents, you know what I'm saying? Because in this time, we all need each other. I don't know how clear I need to express that. But a lot of people say that they're antisocial or that, you know, they're they're really good at being, you know, secluded to the house by themselves. But when that time comes and it's been weeks, months, things change, bro. Mental health is a real thing. And that's another thing that I feel like that the government is not putting any like attention or emphasis on is mental health because I'm going to get into it a little bit later talking about the football cancellations but for a lot of people school was their escape school was their their getaway and I think because it's a shame that because our government is so behind and so fucking slow that we can't even think of any ways to 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 elevate our children's mind or just continue to keep them growing like i i believe that we are for years going to talk about the year 2020 because that's the year that things kind of shook up a little bit things kind of like slow down for just a second um i do believe that we're going to have children that are behind because they didn't finish last year I do believe that um, there are students that didn't get to graduate because one grade might not have matched what it should have been and they didn't get a chance to make up for it because of all the time they missed from school because they were gone now. I think there's so many things that are going to come fucked up from 2020 that we don't discuss. And it's scary because a lot that is going on this year is a first. This is the first time I've ever heard of some colleges staying closed after Thanksgiving. Um, This is the first time that I've ever heard of Walmart closing at 8 and 10 o'clock. Bro, I remember going to Walmart at 2 o'clock in the morning just because. You know what I'm saying? But now we're going through such a crazy time that we need each other more than ever. So whether you have, you know, an elder person that lives on your block and they haven't got to see their grandchildren for the last six months, just maybe knock on the door and just wave. Just say hi. Um, for the for the young kids that are being abused at home that don't know when their next meal is going to be we have to come up with programs and different different things to to give these kids a chance. I think that. I think that we're going to see an increase. In suicide rates. Because you don't know exactly what people are going through. And that's scary. What else is on the docket man. So, football in the city of Wichita for young kids has 
as of now, been canceled. Um, I, like the rest of you, found out through Facebook. Shout out to AJ Bohannon. Um, he was actually the uh, source that I found out uh, found out this news from. And I have mixed emotions about football being canceled. Me being a former athlete, me being a former football player, I hate to see it for kids because I like the rest of you. I've been around kids that football was all they had. I've been around kids whose the coaches are like father figures. I've been around those kids that they didn't know um, what they were going to eat after football practice. I know a lot of those kids that they – they did everything in their power to stay away from home for as long as possible. I know a lot of these children. Um, I grew up with a lot of these children. And now, sad, sadly enough, a lot of those people that I grew up with, their children face the same thing. Um, football has, and sports alone, has always been a release. It's always been a chance for you to blank out everything else that's going on. Um, quick story. I remember I remember as a kid, I remember I used to play basketball and we actually had a basketball tournament tournament at Coleman. And um it would happen to fall upon the same week that one of my aunts passed away. Um, and my grandmother was pretty hurt by it because it was her sister, um, an older sister. And she still came to my game. She still came to my game. Despite that, to come cheer her grandson on. And not only did we win the game, but grandson had the lead scoring three-point shot to lead us into victory. And I remember telling my grandma before the game that this shot was for my aunt. I said, this is for, this is for auntie. And I remember she said, I know you're going to do it. I know you will. And I just remember that entire game, like, you know, uh, you hit a couple of shots here and there. You know, I was only a kid, so, you know, it wasn't crazy about the points of scoring. But when the moment came, you knew the moment. And that is the intimacy. That is the love that sports can create. Um, I have to I have to applaud um, a brother, and I don't know this brother at all. I've never had the pleasure of meeting him personally one-on-one. I've never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. But when I tell you that I've I've seen enough and, you know, I've felt, you know, enough as a father, you know, through things that he's been through. Um, A.J. Bohannon. A.J. Bohannon um, a few weeks ago found out that his car was broken into and the children took it was some kids because he had cameras and turns out these kids took about two thousand dollars worth of stuff a pr good price they, they came up with a nice hefty bag um well he found the child he found the kid that stole from him and he invited the kid to join his football team and it's crazy because you know we got to all visually see this and it seemed like such an amazing story that was going to end on such a positive note. But us not being aware or, you know, even considering the fact that the football season would be canceled. Um, brothers like A.J. Bohannon understand that it's more than just a game. Brothers like... A.J. Bohannon and his son, Amari, or his son, Douche, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the only reason why I know these young kings' names is because, you know, A.J. is so proud and passionate about his children. It's more than just a game for them. 
It's more than that. They've built brotherhoods with these boys. They've built bonds with their teammates. They have they have genuine love for one another. Because a lot of people don't understand this, but football is a different type of game. Football is one of those sports that you have to be confident and you have to be 100%. You have to trust your teammates 110%. You have to be able to hold them accountable and know that they are going to go to war for you to bring home this victory. See, football is one of those sports that's made for gladiators. And this is the best way that I can put it. Football is not meant for anybody that's soft. Football is one of those sports that you're going to get punched in the face. Your toes are going to get stepped on with cleats. Your toes are going to turn purple from the fucking step. Fingers are going to get tired. You're going to get sick because you got to practice and play in the rain. It's going to happen. But you know, the crazy thing is, Is that when it's game time and those lights are on or um, it's Saturday morning and the, the sun just came up and it's not even the high heat index that it's supposed to be for the day. And there's kids outside with their with their pads on and their mouthpieces in. You don't understand. It takes a soldier. It takes a warrior. To go do the things that has to be done on the field. And. These these warriors, these soldiers, these young men. They need that release. They need that. They need that 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 time to let it go. They need that space. They need that. They need to unleash that aggression. They need to unleash that pain because we don't understand. We don't understand where this comes from. But we do know that our ancestors were less than a human being. And from there, from all that pain and that trauma, it's carried on. It's kind of like when you have when you have rollover minutes back in the day. That shit rolls over to the next week. And the reason why it does is because you don't understand the trauma that creates. But you don't know the peace that sports bring. And so it hurts me to see the football season being canceled because a country couldn't be responsible enough and shut down. That a city couldn't be smart enough to enforce masks be worn at every location because they couldn't tell these motherfuckers to not go to Heroes and not go to Rock Island on these Thursdays and Friday nights. All because we wanted to jump the gun is the reason why that we don't have sports now. Or a lot of things. Um, The NBA right now is successfully moving. And the the way that the nba is rolling you can't really apply that to too many other sports because that 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 sport is one of the least amount of people on a team that you'll have but it hurts i feel for these young men i feel for i feel for the kids that this was their release you know what I'm saying? I feel I feel for these kids that, you know, they don't have anything else. You know, they don't they're not into watching television. They're not they're not into, you know, um writing or reading and stuff like that. Some there are some kids that solely want to play. 
There are kids that are being abused by their parents that football practice was their release, was their getaway. There are children that aren't aren't being shown love by their parents and their football coaches were the way that they did that. So I understand both sides. I understand the, and I feel the pain of, of seasons being canceled, but then I also understand that we have to be cautious. I understand that we have to be wary of, of uh, as much contact as it, as we would have as far as playing football because football is a is the most most contact of a sport that you're going to run across. I feel for them, but I understand. And uh, I hate to put this burden on uh, on the coaches and all these men, but – these players are going to need you more than ever now. These players are going to need you. They're going to need uh, times where you might possibly come pick them up, you know, for a couple of hours. They're going to need those phone calls, those text messages. They're going to need, like, those check-ins. You know why? Because some of them don't have it from anywhere else. I hate that. I hurt for you. All my young men, I I hurt for you, but stay focused, stay grounded, respect your elders, love one another, better yourself mentally and physically. So whether that's going into the gym yourself, whether that's going to do knock out some push-ups in the basement or or sit-ups, whether that's going out and going for a jog around the block, just maintain that physical appearance or that or that or that physical work to to keep that because this isn't going to last forever um there are other countries that right now they're starting to go back to living regular lives and until the government decides to put into action and we start making better decisions and it's messed up because I put so much pressure on the government but the less that you see from the government the more you want them to do more and the more you expect more, but you're just not going to get it. So all you young fellas out there that are playing, you know, in these little leagues and stuff like that. Rello loves y'all, man. Rello's praying for y'all and any coaches or anything out there, anything that I can do to help or assist these young players or these young men, please let me know. Please let me know. Um, My thoughts and prayers are with you all. Uh, through this time what else we got on the docket I think that sometimes my kindness gets taken for weakness I feel like I feel like sometimes no fuck that I feel like people don't understand the way things kind of go. I don't think that people believe me when I say that right now we need each other more than ever. I don't think people take me serious when I say that we have to start flipping our money. Um, Whether I make a post in regards to mental health, whether I make a post in regards to venues, at the end of my statement and at the end of my rant or whatever you want to call it, my intentions are solely to better the black community. Um, I'm sick and tired of hearing about these venues using our marketing teams or using our promoters and they're promoting events and shows at their at venues. But yet when the event comes and it's a packed house, they're telling our telling our people, well, I can't pay you 
or, you know, I don't have it. We have to put it towards this and coming up with bullshit excuses. Fuck that shit, man. Let's invest in our own venues. Name me one time that any of these venues have really done anything for us. What they don't understand is that the venue is not is not the the grand all say all. It's not the main attraction. What the attraction is is the talent that we're creating. Whether it's the DJ threes, the DJ fluids, the DJ cadences, whether it's the the promoters, whether it's a Chris Key, whether it's whether it's a it's a it's the bouncers, whether everything that comes with their venue is us. It's ours. These people aren't coming for the venue. These people are coming for you. These people are coming for the performance. These people are coming for the DJs. These people are coming to be around and interact with people that they know, people that they've grown up with, to see their peers and their friends at the level that they are at now. It's to have a good time. It's if it's like this. You want to keep the party going? You go play the music. Because I'm going to have DJ Fluid right over here at this venue. And best believe you me, he finna have his bitch jumping. And don't let me call Flim Doggy Dog. See, we have all the talent. Now it's time that we take the talent and we take the Everything that comes with it and create our own. I made a post and I was talking about uh, mental health and this is, you know, going into the next uh, next subject. Um, What it stemmed from was. I have peers that I see on Facebook and I see on other uh, social media services. And these peers are crying out for help. Facebook is not a therapy session. Facebook is not going to give you the best results that you need. Um, I'm just a firm believer that we all need help. We all need some form of therapy. Um, I've, I've told multiple friends of mine, I'm like, if I'm sick, my mom's going to suggest that I go to the doctor and I'm probably not going to go to the doctor. I'm probably going to take some Alka-Seltzer. I might take some Excedrin. I might do something, you know, to make the pain go away. And if it doesn't go away or it continues to get worse, I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go to someone professional, someone that has studied the human body, someone that has studied what, how the human body works and certain, uh, knows about certain things that could lead to this or know that this might be a sign of this. I'm going to the, uh, just like I'm going to the doctor, our brain needs a doctor. I think that the brain is the, well, it's the truth. The brain is what makes us, us the way that we think. Um, the way that we think there's is that it's not that there's anything wrong with the way that you think. It's just that sometimes it takes so much time to unpack things. We don't understand how this affected us at such a young age. We don't understand how this hurt us or we don't understand the aftermath of dealing with so much trauma. And. I think that now more than ever, us as a community, I'm talking black people, Mexican people, minorities, hell, even white people. Now is the time to get more and more into mental health and, you know, go see a therapist, go see a counselor and stay on the lookout because um, I made a post and I actually got some great feedback as far as black 
therapists and counselors in the city of Wichita. So I'm going to be making a list after I uh, speak to these individuals on a personal level. So then I feel more comfortable promoting and, and, and sharing with you someone that I feel you could go to. Um, I'm going to share this list. And I hope that you guys, you know, decide to take it, utilize it, pick someone that's on this list and learn a little bit more about yourself and more uh, dissect exactly what you need to do for you. So um, in 2020, I hope that everyone, you know, takes the time to invest in themselves. Don't just go out and buy all the laptops and all the computer, uh, all the cameras and all the uh, microphones to start podcasts or start rapping or don't go buy all the toilet. But sometimes just stop, you know what I'm saying, and invest in you. Go see that therapist, you know, after a couple of sessions. Go ahead and take that that family counseling that you need. Go ahead and go to that couples therapy that you need. Go ahead and take that family vacation that you need. 2020 has taught me that we don't have too much time. I grew up in church and that I am a firm believer that we are in the last days of this world. I don't know if the world is going to end tomorrow. I don't know if the world is going to end in 150 years. But what I do know is, is that. What I used to read as a, read as a child or what I used to hear in the book of Revelations. I'm starting to see it. And I really hope that everyone is in a right space and a right spirit at this time or trying to get to that point because boy, do we need it? Boy, do we need it? But continue to be better, continue to be great, continue to grow, continue to elevate, continue to work on you to continue to, to continue to pray, continue to manifest things, continue to, um, to can you continue to meditate, continue to do yoga, continue to continue to, um, drink all drink plenty of water to continue to focus on your pH balance. You know what I'm saying? Like do everything tonight. I'm going home and I am having, um, Buffalo cauliflower wings and I'm going to eat them and I hope they're good because this is the first time that I've tried them and we're going to go from there. Just trying to better myself every day. Big man. <laughs> but everybody, um, I hope that you guys appreciate it and enjoy this episode. I know that it's not too many laughs. Um, there's not too much to laugh about right now. Um, be on the lookout for a new vibe podcast episode with me, Troy, uh, Mojo and LT. Be on the lookout for um, a last episode or new episode from the vibe with her who will be taking a quick break after this last episode. Um, be on the lookout for more realism as I'm interviewing some dope people. Um, be on the lookout for more content, be on the lookout for a big event that I have planned, a big announcement that I have coming within the next month. I look forward to hearing from all of you and you guys giving me your opinions. Um, go ahead and check out the uh, first episode that seemed to make a lot of people upset. I ain't got too much to say about that. Um, and yeah. Everything that I say, I say it and I mean it. I don't need to lie. I don't need to. And just because you don't know exactly where the information came from, don't mean that it ain't true. But it's your boy Rello. That's R-E-L-L-O. And this is another episode of Real Talk. So stay tapped in. Subscribe to that uh, Vibe Wichita YouTube page. Follow the Realism page on Facebook. Follow the Vibe Wichita page on Facebook. And much love to you all. Continue to be in prayers. Peace. I've been all in my bag. You've been all in my business. You be all in your feelings. I've been all in them trenches. I've been all in my bag. You be all in my business.